All right, we're here at the GameSalute.com booth at Gen Con 2010. I'm Dan, and I'm talking with Anton from Fantasy Flight Games. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure, Dan. How are you doing? Good. So we're gonna join. We're gonna show off some of the new hotness that just released here at the show, and some really upcoming hotness that is not even available yet. These are mock-up boxes for these two here. So, Battles of Westeros over here, the core game released recently. This is the Wardens of the West. Most of these that came out here at the show will be available in just a couple weeks. So that's uh, Wardens of the West is the Lannister expansion for that? Correct. Wardens of the West expands your, your Lannister forces. You get three commanders and three additional troop types. Uh, and uh, with this game, we're excited how rather than uh, working through left, right, middle flank, you're really focused on the commanders on the field. And uh, you get that sense that these individuals are heroic and you need to run and charge forward and yet protect them. Um, anyone who knows the Battles of Westeros is going gonna, is gonna to really be excited about what we've got with each of these expansions. And then they've also announced the Kings of the North expansion, which is due uh, next year maybe. W Wardens of the North, yeah. And we don't have a re final release date, right? And uh, just keep checking our website for more information. So if you like Battles of Westeros, that's a battle lore game from Fantasy Flight. Those are the expansions for that coming up soon. So uh, that's uh, Lannister, and then I assume the North is Stark. Stark, correct. Absolutely. Okay, then we have Constantinopolis. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? All right, Constantinopolis is, uh, has finally arrived, and in this game, uh, you are a merchant in the city of Constantinopolis, and you are really focused on building your trade and, uh, and, and maximizing your trade routes to be, become the wealthiest merchant in the city. Um, you've got uh, goods. It's a, it's a very Euro-style game. It's for two to five players, uh, and it's playable in... A couple hours? A couple hours. I think it's a couple hours. Recommended to 13 plus, yeah, it's uh, 90, minutes. 90 minutes. And so, for those of you who think that Fantasy Flight only publishes what uh, the less literate among us call Ameritrash games, here's your Euro game. Bam! All right. Now we're going to go for an Ameritrash game Dungeon Quest. Dungeon Quest. <laughs> This is a brutal uh, delve into Dragonfire Dungeon, and one to four adventurers each take the role of a hero. Um, you enter the dungeon, and a a as a hero, the, the thing that you want to do is you want to grab the most treasure, right? And you want to do so without losing your life with the bottomless pits or the traps or the monsters that uh, appear on all sides. And at some point, turn around and you hope to make it out alive. Um, I actually played this last week. I died on turn two, uh, and uh, we had a good laugh. Yeah. So. I played it uh, earlier at the show, and it definitely feels if you if you're are familiar with the feel of talisman as far as like random stuff can happen to you like you roll 2d6 you roll a two you're dead yeah. dungeon quest is for you this is a uh, wild and crazy ride it's a reimagining of a classic board game that's well loved and uh it's from games workshop originally or uh, it, games workshop licensed it from another uh another another publisher but it's an older it's an older game and it's yes. back new edition they have made some mechanical changes to it uh ones that i think make they mitigate the luck factors a little bit yeah. um so that was a lot of fun so check out dungeon quest that's coming out in a couple weeks and Ingenious Challenges, it looks like a new version of the Ingenious game that you guys have two versions of already. That is correct. So we have uh, Ingenious and we have the, the Ingenious Travel Edition. Ingenious Challenges takes the same, some of the same elements that you're familiar with, with the, uh, the icons and the style of play, and uh, offers three different games in one. Um, it comes with a ton of components and with cards and with dice that, that have the symbols, if you're familiar with Ingenious. Um, uh, you know, Rack Your Brain, it's a great family game. It, uh, they play fast and they're really fun. And you can play that one solitaire as well, right? Uh, yes, you can. Okay, so that's Ingenious, another Ryan Knizia design. And then we're going to go to Space Hulk Death Angel, the card game. All right, Space Hulk Death Angel, the card game. If you're familiar with the Warhammer 40,000 uh, universe, uh, a Space Hulk is a giant derelict floating Hulk uh, a spaceship and that is infested with gene stealers, which are these uh, 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 incredibly dangerous uh, murdering aliens. And uh, you and your squad of Space Marines are going to uh, try and survive insurmountable odds as they appear on all sides. Um, all the players work cooperatively in this game. So it's a, a game for one to six players, uh, and you hope to survive long enough to fulfill the objective of the, each mission. Yeah, you said all the players play cooperatively, but I think it's actually all the players die cooperatively, because that's what my experience was with it. Lots of death, and you just hope to get to the end. You want to get to the final room alive, basically. And if you get there, if any of your squad's still alive, then you all win. That's it. The key is really to maximize the individual strengths and weaknesses of each squad member, and that's that's where the fun is, is really wrestling with the choices with the group as a whole. You're flipping back and forth, you've all got special abilities, you're facing different ways, you move each other around, you all do that together. So that's a Corey Kineska design, yes, that's is. Death Angel, the card game, Space Hulk game. All right. Then we've got 
Uh, you guys have a new partnership with Dust. Yes. And Dust Tactics is the gigantic box that is part of that. That is that. Uh, Dust Tactics is a tactical miniatures board game for two to four players. Um, you've got uh, two platoons of units, and it's set in an alternative timeline, 1947, um, but there's alien technology, and uh, factions, political factions around the world are using this to fuel brand new uh, weapons of war as they struggle to dominate the, the planet at that time. Um, it plays incredibly fast. The rule set is really tight and really clear. Uh, we've been having a blast with this. 45 minutes to an hour. Um, it's very tense, uh, nail-biting, excitement, exciting game with lots of groans and yells and cheers. And this is in the big coffin-style box at Epic Games. It's yes, a big $100 game. You get tons of stuff in there. Now, I know there was some discussion about whether there be, I think there's going to be rules for playing uh, freeform, not on a board. Is that right, or is that still in development? Correct. Uh, the miniatures, if you've seen them, are spectacular. They're uh, tabletop miniatures quality uh, in a board game. And out of the box, we've got a terrain tile, set of nine terrain tiles. But uh, after Gen Con, after we recover, you're gonna, we're going to release a PDF for download uh, with miniatures rules that you can play on a terrain table. And so if you're a terrain gamer, a minis gamer, you can play the same uh, in the same setting with the same squads and units, and that will continue forward through the expansions that are coming later, quarter four, 2010, and quarter one in 2011. So. And this is the same, uh, you guys had the Dust board game previously, this is the same world as that. Uh, is that game still around, how does that differ? Absolutely. Uh, Dust, the strategy game, it takes place at a very different scale. You're working at a global scale, and here this is squad and unit combat. Um, in Dust, the strategy game, it's slightly uh, further ahead in the timeline. It's like 1950s. Uh, this is 1947, slightly earlier, but it's more the style of play. This is a tactical miniatures board game, small squads, small units, uh, really tight quarters. Great, so that's Dust Tactics. That's and then we've got uh, City of Thieves, which is set in Cadwallon, also for a Dust Universe. There you go. So Cadwallon, City of Thieves, uh, each, uh, each player at the table takes command of uh, uh, a group of four thieves that each have individual unique abilities and powers. They go racing through these, uh, the, a labyrinth of streets in the, the town of Cadwallon, uh, trying to grab as much treasure and gold as possible, and then hold on to that long enough to escape the city before the city guard is uh, alerted. Um, it plays fast and furious. There are a lot of uh, challenge your neighbor cards that you play in response, so lots of backstabbing and double crossing and really blocking other players' movements. A lot of fun, really wild. Um, this has been a huge hit as well. Great. And there's another card game that you guys acquired we don't have here on the table, Arcana, which is also set in Cadwall, and that's a, a deck-building card game. Uh, correct, and it's a deck-building card game. It's got elements of a trick-taking card game, um, and it's something that is set in the world of Cadwallon, so the art is uh, phenomenal. If you enjoy that style of art, if you enjoy the Cadwallon background, you should check it out. It plays fast, uh, plays a four-player game. Uh, it's pretty great. And then there's another one in the same universe, I believe, which is Mad Zeppelin. That's another card game with these giant large format cards, and you're throwing things off Zeppelins to try and steal them. That's right. Uh, if, you're, if you're familiar with Citadels, it's a game that's uh, very similar in, uh, in feel and play, uh, but again, set in a particular setting that's very characterful, and uh, the artwork, again, is uh, beautiful. It's got a large, really beautiful cards. Uh, that's another one. Great. Okay, just a couple more here. These little figures you see down here, yes. if you like Arkham Horror, these are painted figures. Now you only see a few here and you say, oh, well what if my favorite investigator's not there? They're all there, they're all available. I believe they're $4 each. That is $3.99 a piece. Uh, our solution was to release the entire line of 48 investigators that, have, uh, that exist out there in the Arkham Horror universe. Um, everyone is available for $3.99 and they're pre-painted. And these will be available shortly? Yes, they will hit the retail chain, so keep watching on our website uh, for when that uh, happens. Great, and if you want to see the full details of all of those, go to our photo gallery at gamesalute.com, click on Gen Con Photos. We have pictures in all the glass cases of uh, a lot of those set up. So then we have the two hot new boxes that were just uh, previewed here at the show. They've been demoing these. This is the new version of Sid Meier Civilization, the board game. Yes, it is. This is a brand new game. Uh, this has been designed by Kevin Wilson. Uh, Kevin Wilson, the lauded designer of uh, Arkham Horror, of Descent. Um, he's uh, involved in Cosmic Encounter, the FFG version. Um, Kevin has come up with a, a brand new take on Civilization as a board game uh, that gives you all the elements that you expect. Um, you get to explore a map. The map is different every time. Um, there are six civilizations included, uh, and there are multiple paths to victory. So you've got the economic victory, you've got the cultural victory, uh, military, and technology. 
And according to the box here, this takes two to four hours. So you're saying it uh, takes all the best aspects of civilization that you expect, except the old civilization board game was like 12 hours. So it, take, it doesn't take that aspect. It, it does not. And, and, and I've been playtesting this. Uh, a lot of us in the, this was one of the toughest playtests to get involved with at the office. Uh, this is a phenomenal game. And the saddest thing about it is that I can't purchase it right now. And we've got prototypes. And we've been sharing that with everyone at Gen Con. But uh, it, this is a win. If you enjoy your civilization, check it out. And these ones, no more details really available now when they're coming out. They're just, these are just empty boxes. But uh, go to fantasyflightgames.com for more information on that. Or go to gamesalute.com. We'll have them on our regular updates when they release. This is the other new hotness that just came out. And one of the ones I'm most excited about, Lord of the Rings, the card game. Now you may be saying, oh, there already was a Lord of the Rings card game. And not like this, there wasn't. This is an LCG, a living card game. If you're familiar with the other ones from Fantasy Flight, Game of Thrones, Call of Cthulhu, Warhammer Invasion, this is the latest. Here's the difference. It's Lord of the Rings, which is awesome, and it's co-op. That's right, a cooperative living card game. Yes, that is true. So uh, not to play favorites, I understand you're a huge Lord of the Rings fan, but uh, the living card game uh, line that we have uh, ensures that everyone, everyone is playing on an equal playing field, and there are monthly expansions when you want to expand your play experience. But right out of the box, um, you and the fellow, uh, your fellow players around the table are going to get to participate uh, cooperatively to try and uh, survive and, 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 and prevail against the forces of Sauron and the evils in Mirkwood. And it's a fantastic game. It's full of theme. This is a, a, magnificent, a magnificent setting. Um, and this is, uh, we think, a very unique uh, opportunity to experience this uh, cooperatively around a table as a living card game. It's very narrative, very broad in scope. And the base game, you'll be able to play with one player by yourself or with two players. And then I believe if you get expansions, you or a second base game, you can play with up to four. Absolutely. So it scales up. Uh, it scales down. Uh, again, you you are the hero, and you've got heroes in your deck. And you're actually participating with uh, um, with quests. You're, you're, you're uh, going on quests that are set in this world. And the world comes alive through the mechanics. So an individual can play. A pair can play. With two sets, you've got three or four players as well. And then the uh, expansion packs for that, whatever they're called, chapter packs or whatnot, are going to have new quests and new cards for your decks to construct. We are definitely going to expand the world. Uh, look at, at the website as we, uh, as we release exactly how the, the, that is going to take shape. Um, but as the living card games, uh, as they do now, every month that world will grow and what you can accomplish in that world and who you can accomplish it with is going to grow. It's gonna, this is going to be fabulous fabulous game. I can't wait till you can play it. Oh, that's awesome. I am uh, going to try and sneak in a little preview here at the show. If not, uh, I'm going to be pre-ordering it as soon as it releases. Now, this is our last one we're going to show you here today. As I knock everything down there, it's Lord of the Rings. But you said, I just showed you a Lord of the Rings game. Well, this is the original favorite Lord of the Rings board game, co-op by Reiner Knizia. Yep. And we actually have this one is here just hot off the plane. Uh, so we could show it to you. It's just a new silver line version of the one that came out way back in like 2000. There you go. So this is something that people have been really looking for for a number of years. Um, this is the cooperative game for two to five players in which you participate in, uh, in the stories that you know of from the Lord of the Rings um, as a group. And you, you try and prevail uh, cooperatively uh, for ages 13 to adult. And uh, what we've done is upgraded a lot of the artwork. Um, we've clarified some of the rules. Uh, and we've changed up some of the components to really make this, uh, this edition a, a spectacular on the tabletop. Um, it's a silver line game now, and uh, we, are, we are super excited to share this again. And that is, uh, this one's great. I remember the older one, I think was like 40 or $50, or something like that. This one's just $35. And uh, it's a little smaller format than the other one, which makes it more portable, more affordable. Absolutely. But if you haven't played Lord of the Rings, the, the, if you like co-op games at all, this is one of the first kind of gamer co-op games. So Ryan Knizia Design. I love it. I'm sure if you like co-op games, you'll love it. If you like Lord of the Rings, definitely check it out. So you got a board game, you got a co-op card game, yep. and you've got lots of Lord of the Rings options going forward. So looking forward to that and uh, possibly some Hobbit games as the movie gets closer. I have I can't speculate. I have no information. Check our website, fantasyflightgames.com, for all that information. Well, I can speculate because we're here at gamesloot.com. We're all about news, reviews, and wild speculation. So if it's under speculation, it's not confirmed. But I will be writing a wild speculation article about that. And then we'll get the official word from Fantasy Flight when they announce it down the road. Sounds good. Thanks, Dan. All right. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Anton. Have a great rest of the show. Thank you. You too.